Now, this is going to be interesting as hell, bro. Rappers who went broke in the stupidest ways. And they got my boy 50 Cent up there right now. You know 50 Cent got a lot of fucking money now. So he might have went broke, but he ain't broke no more, boy. You hear me? Make sure you click the link in the description for the Patreon. It's only $3 a month. We're watching all kinds of shit. And without further ado, let's get started. Before filing for bankruptcy, 50 Cent was spending $108,000 per month to rent an 18 bedroom mega mansion, while T-Pain's bankruptcy was so brutal that by the end of it, he had to borrow money just to buy Burger King. However, let's begin by talking about DMA. X, who had to file for bankruptcy on three separate occasions. But you know what? Here's one thing though. Filing for bank filing for bankruptcy doesn't necessarily mean that they're broke. For example, I I think Donald Trump has filed for bankruptcy multiple times. That nigga is not broke. Smart as he couldn't afford child support. You see, DMX had 17 children with 11 different women, and almost every child resulted in some kind of lawsuit or child support requirement. For example, DMX- Damn! was sued for 1.5 million worth of child support in 2008 what? after a genetic test confirmed that he was the father of a previously unclaimed baby. Don't get me started on this child support shit. That man, motherfuckers in Africa be making off five cents a day. They be wanting you, they be wanting rappers, artists, uh, actors, whatever. It doesn't matter what. They be wanting them kids to be paid uh, um, uh, like 15000 a month and shit like that. You know how much money that is, bro? 15000 a month? in the Midwest. Now, imagine that shit. Imagine 20 or 30,000 a month over in fucking New York. Bro, I'm telling you, bro, they're ridiculous numbers, bro. And they don't even spend it on the kids. They go buy Gucci bags and Louis purses and dildos and shit and ice cream and cake with little confetti stickers on the top, stickers and shit. Stickers. Which when combined with his declining music career, resulted in his first bankruptcy filing. Ooh. Four years later in 2012, DMX was sued by a different ex-partner for a further $1 million worth of child support. And a year after this lawsuit, he'd filed for bankruptcy a second time. His third bankruptcy would occur in 2016, during which it would be discovered that DMX had racked up a further 1.7 million worth of unpaid child and family support. How the fuck do you get a million dollars and child support, these bitches wouldn't even make a million in damn near in their whole lifetime. Which accompanied $950,000 in bank debt yeah, and $1.7 million worth of tax debt. Piece to Since he had $0 in his bank account, DMX was sentenced to six months in prison for the child support, a further year in prison for the unpaid taxes. And was That's so stupid shit. How do, you send, how do you send a broke man to prison for not being able to afford child support that the baby mother, you know what I'm saying? that she wants. You know what I'm saying? Crazy, he also bro. ordered That's to pay crazy. the government 2.29 million in restitution after he oh, was released from his time behind here. bars. That's However, DMX never had the chance to pay the amount back in full as he died in April 2021. And despite his extensive family tree, DMX never wrote a will, meaning that his family was still involved in money-related legal battles even after he was dead and buried. Tiger was certainly better at managing his child support payments, oh, although he definitely had a weakness when it came to luxury spending. Ending. After cultivating his career as a successful rapper, right. Tiger's name entered news headlines after he'd purchased a $200,000 Mercedes Maybach for his girlfriend Ugh. while being $480,000 behind in rental payments on a luxury Malibu home. He just didn't want to. Like, sometimes you gotta understand there'd be a lot of politics behind shit. It'd be a lot of uh, bullshit that'd be behind stuff and like wanting to get things done, having disagreements and shit like that. So you just don't fucking do it. You just don't pay it. You know what I'm saying? Like imagine owing somebody, then you having a disagreement with them and you don't pay it. Shit, I'm gonna give you a fucking, the best example, fucking America and China. How much debt do we owe China? But we don't like the fact that China is doing all these expansions. So America's not fucking going to pay them. Do you get what I'm saying? As a it's result, not, Tiger was sued by his landlord. It's not that America is broke, 
They just don't want to fucking do it. Good. It's Although just simple. he failed to show up to court as he was on holiday in Turks and Caicos, yet this situation wasn't the only example of Tiger spending big in one area while being financially behind in another. For example, in 2016, while shopping for a new Bentley, Tiger's Ferrari 458 was repossessed in the parking lot as Tiger hadn't been paying for the loan. Despite <laughs> this, Tiger would go on to purchase another Mercedes Maybach, as well as a Land Rover, a Rolls Royce Ghost, and a Rolls Royce Cullinan, all of which were repossessed for non-payment while he was seen looking at a brand new Lamborghini. Oh, In addition to this, Tiger was I would not rent to that nigga, bro. Built by a second landlord for 181000 after Damn. once again missing rental payments in 2016, which was followed by a third property-related lawsuit in 2020, where Tiger had racked up over $200,000 in damages and unpaid rent on yet another rental property. Wow. It was then revealed that Tiger was being court-ordered to pay for $200,000 worth of unpaid jewelry, which accompanied Damn. the accusation by his ex-girlfriend, Black China. He said, yesterday I had to give up three of my cars, uh, my reasons, moral beliefs, being a single mother. No, so shut the fuck up. <laughs> shut the fuck up, man. And he'd been missing child support payments. And just to add a chair. I had to give up my cars because I had to give up three of my cars because of child support payments. Bitch, go get a job, on bro. Top of the get, cake. While all of it's this not was for going the kids, down, bro. Tiger was in eight hundred ninety thousand dollars worth of tax debt to the government. Despite all of this, Tiger is still seen flexing a lavish life on social nah. media, which is a luxury unavailable to rap producer Scott Storch, who blew through seventy million dollars in less than three years. Wow. Scott had earned this money by producing for some of the biggest names in music, including Kanye West, Dr. Dre, and Jay Z. Yet Scott Storch's insane net worth began to diminish after he purchased. An insane supercar collection. 30 cars, including Bugattis and Ferraris and all that kind of stuff. As well as wow. a $10.5 million mansion where he housed more than 20 staff, including a boat captain, just in case wow. he wanted to go out on his yacht. So the captain was on full time staff? Yeah. In case he wanted to take the boat out? Yeah. And the boat was how many bedrooms? Seven. Seven bedroom boat worth about how much? 20 million. 20 million. Scott what? went into exp Nigga, you could just live in your fucking boat if you wanted to, bro. But the problem is they only be having like two sources of income, three. Like they bank on a music career or they bank on a label situation. Like imagine taking a loan, right? Imagine getting a loan from your label or a bank, which your label could be like a bank. Shit, they could own a bank. Imagine getting a loan taking that loan for a million dollars and going to buy liabilities with that shit. But that I'm was costing on him. My monthly overhead for my household employees was somewhere in the neighborhood of a million dollars a month I was spending. And then what? if he continued oh, no, to work, there wouldn't have been any problems, although this isn't what he would do. It went from me working and delivering to, to doing result. drugs and not going to the studio. I just stopped working and then I got depressed and jaded. As mentioned, Scott stopped making music and instead began to get addicted to the nightlife in Miami. And with no money coming in plus a million a month going out it was only going to be so long before scott hit zero by 2009 just three years after having a net worth of 70 million scott had filed for bankruptcy bro when at what point do you get down to your last five million and you just say okay everybody's fired like you know what i'm saying like what just fire everybody six bro. years like, later scott doing? would file for bankruptcy a second time claiming to have a grand total of three thousand six hundred dollars of assets to his name a hundred dollars in cash five hundred dollars in clothing and a three thousand dollar watch most shocking his music companies are valued at zero dollars and in 2014 he made a grand total of only ten thousand he lied throughout this hardship fat joe was, was one of the only rappers to keep their friendship with scott possibly because fat joe went through a similar situation situation himself. Fat Joe had earned $1.18 million in 2007, $1.28 million in 2008, $265,000 in 2009, and $630,000 in 2010. However, despite having made this $3.3 million in only four years, Fat Joe failed to pay taxes on it. He was able to come up with $718,000 and had also done extensive charity work. However, this wasn't enough to satisfy the judge who sentenced Fat Joe to four months in prison. Despite taking wow. personal responsibility for his actions by stating, there was a lot going on in the years that I didn't file my taxes, but it was my responsibility. Less than four years later, Fat Joe entered news headlines again after the IRS revealed that he still owed them 1.1 million in taxes. Wow. However, this number was absolutely nothing in comparison to Fat Joe's friend Lil' Kim, who owed almost four times. I like how he's trying to like, he's just jumping from one 
New York rapper to the next. <laughs> this is like, but that's nothing compared to Lil Wayne. And if you thought Lil Wayne was bad, Nicki Minaj. And, like, more, what? and became, quote, too poor to file for bankruptcy. Lil Kim wasn't nearly as successful as some of the other rappers featured on this list. However, this didn't stop her from purchasing a $2.3 million mansion back in 2002, notably with the help of yeah. a mortgage. That's Throughout the 2000s, ugly. Kim's music career slowed dramatically. And by 2018, Kim was filing for bankruptcy as she still owed the full $2 million on her property, despite the 16 years years that had passed. In addition Damn. to this, Kim now owed $1.85 million to the government for 13 years worth of unpaid taxes Damn. which accompanied a further $185,000 in unpaid legal fees. The bankruptcy became even worse after discovering that by 2018, Kim was earning a comparatively small $18,000 per month, of which $2,000 went to staff, another $2,000 went to clothing. No, you don't need to be spending two thousand dollars for clothing every month, my 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 baby. I tell you what you need to do. You need to go get a a a, a tour going with all the old rappers and shit. Go get you a fat ass worldwide tour going, and and do all these venues and go buy y'all some fucking property. Do Airbnb something. Eighteen thousand a month. Jesus. And ten thousand dollars went to travel fees, meaning she oh, had no. less than four thousand dollars per month I don't to believe dig herself this. out of four million this. worth of debt. Somehow, Lil Kim managed to quote get her finances into good shape, and her bankruptcy filing was dismissed. However, mm. MC Hammer wasn't quite so oh, lucky. Oh, okay. Despite having the fifth best-selling hip-hop album of all time, which sold seventeen million copies and featured songs such as "You Can't Touch This," MC Hammer was wasn't able to stay out of financial trouble. He bought more than 17 luxury cars, a private jet, two helicopters, and 21 racehorses. Some of the horses were valued at around 1 million. Most of his expenses, however, were on his home. He bought a property in Fremont, California for 12 million and spent another 30 million on renovations to turn it into his dream home. He added a bowling alley, basketball court, baseball field, recording studio, movie theater, 17 car garage, 10 Oh my God, dude. And you know what really kills me is this right here. Tennis courts and two swimming pools. A tennis court. When the fuck do you think these rappers are playing tennis? When do you think the When do you think these rappers are playing tennis, bro? When? When, bro? These rappers don't fucking play tennis. Like, okay, the basketball court, okay. A lot of black people play basketball. A lot of rappers play basketball. That's fine. When the, when the last time you seen a fucking rapper play tennis? Just doesn't make sense, bro. Two swimming pools, you only need one. Like, it's just, it's little stupid shit. It's dumb shit that just people, it's like, bro, okay, you got one source of income and it's doing really well. Take that, multiply it, get five or six straight sources of income. Use that income to pay for this shit, bro. They be borrowing money and shit, bro. To the 40,000 Making payments every mansion. month. One of the pools was shaped like his signature baggy pants that came to be known <laughs> as hammer pants. He added several marble statues of himself throughout the property and installed a gold hot tub in his bedroom. And to keep oh, everything wow. running smoothly, he employed a staff of nearly 200 people on the property, which oh, cost him wow. an estimated $500,000 a month month. Well, your milk the head is broke. Unsurprisingly, less than five years later, MC Hammer had filed for bankruptcy, at which point it had to be revealed that he hadn't only spent his entire $70 million fortune, but had also taken on a further $13 million in loans, which had been borrowed from over 200 different lending institutions. Wow. Despite having spent a total of $42 million on his California dream home, the property resold for only $6.5 million. However, what? He put $30 million in he bought it for 12 put 30 and it only sold for six However, if we're on the topic of expensive homes oh, being repossessed no. by the bank we need to talk about birdman who's ranked as the 15th richest rapper in the world with a net worth of 110 million dollars but this is what makes birdman's story unique if he was worth over a hundred million dollars why was his miami mansion being repossessed by the bank for non-payment birdman had purchased the home to. back in 2012 for 14.5 million yet by 2007 
a foreclosure suit had been filed by the bank and quote all personal items within the home including platinum records gracing the walls a pool table and dozens of pairs of shoes were all confiscated and placed in storage the mansion was eventually sold by the bank for 10.85 million in july 2020 however birdman's lawyer has come out to explain the foreclosure stating that it was the result of illegal loan terms set by the bank so perhaps take birdman's bankruptcy with a grain of salt yeah, I don't think that nigga is broke. You know what I'm saying? Remember, like I said, bankruptcy doesn't necessarily mean you don't have money. It means you're trying to get some bullshit out your name. However, That's there's no ambiguity around how Ooh, now he, he went broke. He done fucked he's now up. Come on multiple but he's good now. He's a streamer now. He, he's good, but he didn't fuck up. Podcast to explain just how brutal his bankruptcy was. T-Pain had built up a net worth of over $40 million at his peak in 2007, with all of his closest rap friends hey. advising him that as long as he kept rapping, the money would keep on coming in. Yeah, Everybody right. before me that I had to look up to, they were just like, no, this is great. Once you start rapping, it's good, just money all the time. <laughs> Nothing bad's ever gonna happen. Your family's not gonna come after you. Just rap and it's just girls and swimming pools after this. <laughs> for this reason, his spending began to get out of control. I bought my Bugatti. He bought it for $2.1 million. $2.1 million. And then you, very shortly thereafter, you sold it for, all they gave you was 800 This nigga be talking, like my boy Steve-O be talking like he did smoke two or three packs a day. God damn. 8, yeah. So it was like renting a car for <laughs> $1.3 million. Yeah. <laughs> wow. With the purchase of his Bugatti accompanying a $400,000 chain and houses for his workmates. I got this house I want to get. I got this other house for my assistants and, you know, all my, my runners and, and <laughs> my producers and stuff. So we bought a house after that and we just started going crazy with the money. I wasn't paying attention to it. Which was extra bad as T-Pain never even checked in on how much money he had. At least he's honest about it. I didn't want it. to know because I was led to believe that this is just gonna, it's only gonna grow. Because these rappers told me that I'm just gonna make money forever. It's just gonna keep going up and up. In the process. Yeah, but that's that's the whole point of why you should know, bro. Because you, you know, you can't trust what other niggas say, bro. You know, every people, everybody lies, bro. Because I mean, not everybody, but like, imagine somebody s telling you, like, like if you talk to somebody, they're not gonna tell you, oh man, I'm in financial ruin. Oh man, I don't know where I'm gonna get my next check. They're gonna talk about what makes them look good. Cause they have a lot of pride, bro. Especially if you've been up and you've been on the up and up and keep going up. You're not gonna keep you're not gonna wanna tell somebody like, oh yeah, man, I'm really fucked up. No, you're not gonna say that. You're gonna say, oh man, everything's good, man. Just keep on doing you. Matter of fact, keep doing you and let me hop on a feature. I need some um uh, credentials. Process T Pain began to create less music, and within a few years, his accountant was advising him that he was almost out of money. My accountant was like, dude, you're like out of money. And I was like, no, I'm not. And while T Pain seemed confident that he had plenty of cash left, reality set in for him after he'd have to borrow money just to buy food. When you say you was broke, was you had like zero dollars broke? I like had to borrow money to get my kids burger. What's the most you ever had in the bank? At one time. 40 million. However, T Pain was lucky to get away with a loss of only 40 million, as the final person on our list makes this number look. These last two rappers, bro, they actually did really well. I stopped it on 11 11, bro. Y'all got to make a wish for your boy, man. Make a wish, man. I stopped it for just for us, bro. I stopped it just for us, man. Um, Oh, 100,000 subscribers in uh in the next three months. All right, there we go. That's my wish. But now, look, look, rappers who went broke, bro, you got to understand T Pain is not broke anymore. That nigga is like climbing up to be one of the biggest streamers and 50 cent who they get ready to talk about is definitely not broke anymore like bro. loose change 50 cent 50 didn't only release the 10th best-selling american hip-hop album of all time but he also made over a hundred million dollars on a vitamin I had water that investment hat, I plus that a further 78 million dollars from a luxury underwear deal really? in the late 2000s 50 cent made an estimated 300 million dollars in only two years so when he announced that he was filing for bankruptcy in mid 2015 with debts totaling over 32 million wow. the entire world was thinking the same thing how did this happen well after 50 cent uploaded the sex tape with rick ross's girlfriend 50 was successfully sued for 7 million which accompanied another court order for 50 cent to pay 17 million to a headphone manufacturer after one of their collabs went sour 50 Ooh. cents clothing company g unit clothing then fell out of the spotlight which accompanied the closing of his movie company g unit productions as well as his boxing company sms promotion Emotions. Throughout oh, the whole man. process, the global financial crisis had taken a toll on the value of 50 cents investments, and by 2015, he was earning a comparatively small $185,000 per month. 
that, it's not that small. You know what I'm saying? But a, a month, nigga. You, you could certainly it. argue that this was enough for 50 to get back on his feet. However, 108,000 of this monthly income was going toward an 18 bedroom mega mansion. Get rid of the remaining 77,000 was going toward menial expenses such as his gardener. With bankruptcy documents revealing that 50 Cent still owed money to his stylist, fitness coach, and even his barber. Despite this, he began to troll on social media with posts such as this one, spelling <laughs> out the word broke with $100 bills. And within two <laughs> years, 50 Cent had paid back 23 million million worth of his 32 million dollar 50, debt. Man, 50 cool. Cent eventually got back to zero and according to Google has built up a net worth of 40 million dollars over the last five years. Yeah my boy from from rags to bitches you know what I'm saying from from sad to triumph you know what I'm saying my thing is bro a lot of times it's not about how you fell off bro it's about how you bounce back it ain't about what you were given it's about what you take you know what i'm saying it's really all about that bro because at the end of the fucking day you, we're all gonna fuck up we're all gonna fuck up we're all gonna fuck up they fucked up on grand scales you know with millions but how think about this how much money do you get in a month and sometimes you might fuck it up you know and you're gonna get those people down in the comments i never fucked up money i'm i'm always been getting with my money my parents my parents no but my parents no those are my, my, my parents okay shut the fuck up all right if you're if you're on the outside of that good for you <laughs> great but guess what 90 percent of people they fuck up money they fuck up money and i'm one of them fucked up money but it's not about what you did in the past it's about what you learned from it i ain't fucking up no more money <laughs> i'm buying me a house